So here we are once again in Dr. Atkinson's underwater mass spectroscopy layer. Underwater because fires are much easier to put out there. And we've been having a lot of those lately in these review videos. There's propen one ol So a mass spectrometer vaporizes a sample. There's a vapor. And then an electron gun shoots electrons at it and knocks off an electron. The electric field provided by the plates accelerates it towards the magnetic field from the electromagnet, which will bend its trajectory based on its mass and charge, and finally into the detector, and then maybe a scientist at the end. Oh, there's my chainsaw. I need that now. Whoa! Ooh, hopefully that shark won't show up again, and we'll play no further part in these videos. So you allowed one cut with the chainsaw or molecular scissors, molecular chainsaw, however you want to describe the mass spectrometer. Once you've made your iron, you're allowed to cut off a neutral part of it. What does that mean? Well, let me make the iron. Let me shoot electrons at propon one ol first of all. With the electron gun. Oh, I didn't see him stand in there. Oh, I've made an earring hole. An electron has come off of the propon one ol leaving it positive. This is now the molecular iron, M+. The mass spectrometer makes one cut. You're allowed, woo -hee -hee. you're allowed one cut, like molecular scissors or a molecular chainsaw, to cut off a neutral part of the molecule. And where did it go? Oh, where did Dr. Atkinson go? So for example, you could cut here! Or here! Or there, or there. The position of the cuts, well, we simplify it in IB chemistry. And I'll tell you some more about it later. Oh, I wonder what that does. Oh dear. Ah, oh, he's waving at me, and he's got a little smile. What could go wrong? Swim, swim, Dr. Atkinson. Swim for your life. Not that way. Oh dear. Oh dear me. Okay then, so how does a mass spectrometer work? Well, we've looked at that, and how can it be used to identify molecules? I'm going to give you, and the IB only needs you to know, a simplified way of how this happens. What we say might not be exactly true, but the theory is correct, if not the specific absolute examples. All right then, so ethanol is shot with an electron gun, knocks off an electron to make positive ethanol. Okay, now it can go through the mass spectrometer. It can be accelerated and deflected. A mass spectrum, which is the readout, is abundance and M over Z, where Z is the charge, normally, invariably, plus one. The M plus ion, and there's a video about that before this, is the molecule with a positive charge. The actual sample. You're allowed one cut with the molecular scissors or chainsaw, you're allowed to cut off something neutral. All right, let's cut there. Let's cut off the methyl group, leaving behind that positive ion. That positive ion, well, that's 15 less than 46 on the M over Z scale. So let's draw a line in. The height of the lines is only very loosely tied to the actual abundance as you would understand it. It's more complicated than we're making it seem. So don't worry too much about the height of the lines. All right, let's make ethanol plus again and do another scissor cut. Let's say here. And we cut off the ethyl group, leaving OH plus. Now OH plus is unlikely, but you don't know that. You don't need to know that but there'd still be a little peak there. So I've lost 29 from my M plus. So that gives me a line at 17. Furthermore, I could do another cut in the same place and cut off the OH, leaving a positive ethyl iron so 17 is missing now from the 46 original. And that gives me a line at 29. 
So if we show you the spectrum, hopefully you can work out what it is you started with. So which numbers are you supposed to know? Because there seems to be a lot of weird things going on here. These are the ones you're supposed to know. If you lose 15, it's methyl. If you lose 17, it's OH. So that could be alcohol. Could be a carboxylic acid. Minus 29 is ethyl or an aldehyde. So they might like to play with that. Minus 31 is that strange beast. And minus 45 is a carboxylic acid group. Those are the ones you're expected to be able to recognize. Let's look at another mass spectra. So again, abundance on the y-axis and M over Z on the x-axis. Mass over charge. Charge is almost always plus one. Propanoic acid, well, that has to be ionized to make it propanoic acid plus before it will go through the mass spectrometer. The M plus ion is my sample. So it's 74, the molar mass is 74. I'm allowed to cut just once and cut a neutral thing off. So if I cut off the methyl group, then I'm left with a fragment with mass of 59. And if I cut off that other side, I'm left with the methyl, you see? So each cut, you can pretend both sides gives you a line. If I cut there, I could be cutting off the carboxylic acid functional group and leaving an ethyl, or vice versa. So I can get another two lines. You must put the plus because only positive things are going to make it through the mass spectrometer. So you must put the plus. Now there might be others, but that'll do for now. Let's look at the tricks. Well, sometimes the M over Z, the Z is plus two. Very, very unusual they'll ask that. Almost always it's one, but be aware of that trick. You know, if the lines are all in the wrong place, that might be the point. Well, let me just draw in these lines. See if we can work out what that is. Well, M plus, so the molecule has a mass of 32. It can lose a hydrogen, and it can lose a methyl, and it can lose an OH. Notice I put losing, not what's actually there. I've shown you what's lost. Oh, so that's methanol then. 